Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. drawn to a flame. Your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed. Hello, and welcome to Dark Souls 2. Oh, this is exciting to get be back in a Dark Souls game. It's been a little bit 
a little while since I put up my Dark Souls 1 playthrough on the channel, and I am super excited to do Dark Souls 2. Not only the fact that I can, you know, do a recording of it, I've always wanted to do recordings of this uh, game, but I can actually finish this game, because I've never actually beaten this one, I've never done the final bosses, I've never beaten it, and I haven't even started Dark Souls 3, because I want to save that, uh, uh, pop my Dark Souls 3 cherry on the, uh, on recording here, but here we are, starting off Dark Souls 2, there's these little doggies or whatever the hell they are that uh, you can see here. If you don't hit them, they don't do anything. But if you punch them, they will eat your face. And that is uh, not a good thing. But we're going to move forward here. We are given this... Uh, not, not, the, not really any uh, sort of mission that we're supposed to do. It's just uh, really nicely. There is a light this way. And you go towards the lights as we head up into the, the witch's hut here. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face. The face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes. You will become one of them. Hollows prey upon men, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> Of course, my name has got to be Kanajashi. Type that in and go. Yes. <laughs> At least you know your own name. Here's your reward for sharing. It's a human effigy. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? Think back, deep into your past. Yes, it's an effigy of you. And now we get to design our character. So, I want to go with some sort of Faith Tank Bruzy type character. Uh, there's a few choices here. We could start with the... Okay, let's just go through the classes so people know what we have for choices. We've got a Warrior, uh, High Strength and Dexterity, Skilled with Weapons, a Knight, High HP and Adaptability, Tough to Take Down, a Swordsman, uh, sort of a Dex Swords, uh, bandit, high deck, skilled with the bow, fights well at all ranges. The cleric, which has got the miracles. The sorcerer, which has high intelligence and attunement. The explorer, who has, uh, um, not strong as a character, but has a bunch of trinkets and items that can help him. And then the deprived, which has nothing for the people who want to challenge. But there's two real choices right now. You can see the very bottom... I think it's the very bottom right, yeah, of the stats. I'm seeing, looking over on the far right here, at the very bottom, uh, there is faith. So you can see the faith here is 12, and the faith here is 8. Now, it's the question of where do we want to go with this? Uh, I'd like to do a faith tank, but do I want faith to be primary, or do I want faith to be secondary? 
because I could go with something like a knight to start off with and then get some magic later, or I could go something like the cleric to start off with immediately because he comes with a miracle. He comes with heal, which allow me to use heal immediately. But he has way less armor and uh, obviously a, a slower weapon. Not really suited for taking out stuff immediately. Or we could go with a bandit who has a bow and an axe and fairly decent armor. Uh, you have the, the dexterity and he has eight faith. That's pretty good. Uh, only four behind this guy, but he has a ton more in terms of weapon stats. Look at the the hand in the bottom right. I believe that's dexterity. Then the, uh, the flexing muscle is strength. So this guy has 11 strength and five dexterity, but this guy has nine strength and 14 dexterity. So just way more weapon stats, um, but much less in terms of attunement and faith. Interesting. I think this guy might be the easier start because I have a bow and I can do a few things with ranged that uh, are that make things easier in the first few sections of the game. Uh, which I might want to go for. And then we get into uh, healing. Or we could just go with the cleric and just deal with that. Nah, let's just go with the cleric. That'll be fine. And then gift, we're going to go for a petrified something. And I'll show you why we're going to do that in the future. And then we can... We can also change around the physique and the build and stuff like that, but I'm not going to. You don't really see your character very much in terms of, like, their face, unless you are not wearing a helmet. So, we're just going to finalize our creation, because who really cares what we look like. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> Go through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. It's not very nice of these uh, old ladies here saying that I'm going to lose all my money over and over again. And here we are as our cleric. We're going to head up the stairs here as there is a chest up top that we can get. And I have played this game a little bit before. I only got about halfway, maybe, I don't know, three quarters? I honestly don't know how far I got through it before. But I've never finished it. So we're definitely gonna go and finish the game for this, for the for the channel, and I'm heading back out to the the starting area. And there's a few more things you can do here. There's an enemy that you can fight uh, that's up there. Uh, you you go down here and you go to the right, and there's a passageway through, and you can get to him. But he's a little tough and a little tedious with my current setup. If I had a ranged item like a ranged attack, i definitely go and try to take him out. But with just my melee attack and no shield and no real armor, it's very painful to try to finish him. So we're just going to grab that one item, as it'll become useful in a bit, and we're going to head forward. Light the first bonfire here, and just rest to, uh, to recuperate. And this is one of the first things that you can find here is that you can travel, fast travel, uh, right from the start. Where in Dark Souls 1, you had to get to Lord Vessel in Anarlando, which was a fair way through the game, into uh, fast travel. Here, you can do it right away. But 
as we head through here, we see that light beckoning us to head forward, and we can just run along this pathway if we wanted to, and we can get out uh, immediately and head into the game if we knew what we were doing. But these here are the tutorial areas, and it, they're really cool. I love how they set these up. So you come in here, then there's these little tablets that say, oh, attack, our uh, right button, okay. Oh, okay, this is, uh, this is how you play the game. And it's like, oh, while target is locked, change target. Okay, and so you can learn how how to play, which is cool. And then you can hold that, oh, this is how you dash. Oh, okay, I can run quickly. Then they try to uh, ambush you and teach you that ambushes can happen sort of thing. That's moving forward here. And then this guy will not aggro on you for no for any reason until you attack him because they want to show off critical hits. Oh, so so satisfying. And that this is a really interesting thing here. So there's the the big monster there. It's actually the same monster that was in the area before that you can optionally fight to get a ring, but uh, at the moment we're not going to go do that. We'll go back to there later when we have a little bit uh, more equipment, pre preferably a shield. And there is this sort of casket, uh, sarcophagus sort of thing there. And you can jump into that. You can get over there and then you can jump into that and you pop back out of it, but your gender has changed. So if you ever wanted to be like, hey, I, I didn't, I, I kind of want to you know, change my character around, do a little character customization even after uh, that customization screen is done. You can do it that way. We've got our dagger there. We're going to run forward and dodge this guy's arrow. Ah, unfortunately not. I was trying to hit him before he got the, the shot off, but it didn't work. We're going to come forward here. Where, did that guy drop? Oh, he dropped. Okay. Charge. Smack. Excellent. And we're heading forward. Last couple guys here. Ow. That wasn't nice. And we'll just wait for him to less loose the arrow, and then we can charge at him. He still hit me. How annoying. But, oh well. Not like we need to worry about our health right now. We should be able to just hold it and wait until we get to the next zone in order to top it off. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to there, and then that to there, and then that, and that, and that, and that. Now we can cast heal with our left button, heal ourselves up, and then we can go back to two-handing in order to use our mace. And now we're going to get to why I took the petrified something. So this is the trading crows, just like in the last game, we can trade with them, and they want smooth and silky, so a smooth and silky stone. How appropriate. We can leave this here, and we can back out of the menus. And uh, they like it, and unlike the previous game, you don't have to reload, you can just uh, pick it up. And we got a human effigy for it. How nice. And they also enjoy the petrified something. This is uh, one of the higher level items, so this will give us a good drop. So we can see what we get. A channeler's trident. Interesting. That's a, that's a random weapon to get. Oh, oh, we can sort things by default positions, by effect, by attack. Oh, cool. And let's go into our equipment here and compare it. Uh, we can see that it has basically the same damage as my, my mace here, but it's a spear weapon. It's a little bit more dex. It, it's a random item that you can get. Sometimes you can get upgrade equipment. Sometimes you can get other things and... Uh, we just happen to get that uh, Channeler's Trident. We may or may not use that in the future, but hey, it's all a gamble. Drop down here, get another soul, 
and then we can drop down here. And I think that'll be it for us in this uh, tutorial area. We don't really need to go down to the other zones. All I really wanted to do was open up those trading crows. And we're going to head out here and head to Majula, which is the main sort of hub. It's the Firelink Shrine of this game. As we step through the light, and we see Majula over the horizon. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. We're going to head down to Majula in the next episode, figure things out, see who's there, and talk to a whole bunch of NPCs before we head off to the first sort of fighting zone of the game. And we got to set up our, our wave emote here. Come on, where is it? There it is. So thanks for watching this episode of Dark Souls 2. Good hunting.